Hello all, welcome back to Career with Vasant YouTube channel. My name is Vasant. I hope you all doing well. So as you know, this is a series where we are explaining about system design. Like I told in multiple videos of mine, this is one of my favorite series where I like intersecting the different systems, understanding it end to end, and explaining it to you guys. In this particular video, we are going to discuss the system design of a uh, newsfeed, or in layman term, if I have to tell a social media application like Facebook, uh, Instagram, Twitter. How do they basically render so much of a data? How do they handle messaging? A lot of problems these big social media applications has. Now I'm gonna break it down step by step in this video. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, Career with Vasant, please subscribe. I'm gonna bring more such content about interview and front end uh, interview and career uh, preparations. So without wasting further time, let's get started. So primarily, I'm so I'm gonna solving four problems in this particular uh, video. Where first is the rendering the largest, second is infinite scrolling and pagination, and third is handling live video commenting fourth is the resource optimization okay so let's go to the first one rendering a large list okay so what do i mean by rendering a large list for example like uh, like this is the list whatever you are seeing so there's so many items there are thousand items so as you can see the so many items that are that are there on the screen so what would happen if you like have a, a like for example let's take a simple implementation where you have an array where all the elements are keep getting added and you're using the map method to render the item and whenever you keep loading an item, to load in every item, a lot of resources are required. Correct. For example, uh, if the resource has an image, we need to make an API call and get the image. If it has so much of um, videos and other things, we need to get the video, textual information. You make an API call to get the data. So every time, whenever a particular card is loaded, there's so much of processing like CPUs, DPUs, DOMs, all the things are getting basically used. So for example, let's imagine a list with thousand items. If we keep all the thousand items data on the RAM itself, okay, or from wherever we are accessing quickly, mostly it is in the RAM. So where we might start using so much of the resource of a particular browser or in terms of the resource of a machine, which will affect the overall performance of the system. And sometimes the browser take a decision of like not giving so much resource to you. It will create in like hanging of your screen or sometimes you might have seen on Chrome that kill this page. So those kind of conditions might come because of the over over using of the resources. Okay. So what we can do is instead of loading all the cards or all the lists that we want to show. How about we show only those that are visible for on that particular time on the UI. So that's what uh, called the virtualized list. What is virtualized list? Technically, there is a complete list, but we are virtually showing a technical. There is no complete list. User is getting an impression there is complete list, but technically there are only those many items that are actually visible for the, uh, that are actually can be fit on the screen. So it's called a virtual list, not a real list, it's a virtual list. Okay. The multiple packages to implement the virtual list. I'm showing you this particular package, React Virtualized. So there are many folks of this and many other packages also, where this is the demo that I picked from this, where like, for example, in this screen, one, two, three, four, five, six. So there are only six particular DOMs. Um, or six particular divs which are being rendered. Whenever you scroll it, uh, whatever the div that was not currently in the viewport, that's going to be removed from the DOM and whatever is visible, only that kind of used. There is one optimization that can be done here. Like instead of like just removing the DOM, um, there can be only fixed set of DOMs where existing DOM, instead of removing it, you kind of reuse it. For example, there are one, two, three, four, five, six. The there is whatever the DOM that is just going there. Now, instead of remove it from the high, uh, complete memory, reuse it and add it to below. Okay. That is a technique that like that as well. But for the simplicity of this video, we are going to stick to this basic virtualized list where whatever is visible on UI any given time, only those are used for the rendering purpose. Okay. So the, the, uh, instead of showing the complete list, we are going to show only those that fits in the UI that is called the uh, virtualized list. So that is how the rendering a large list problem can be solved in social media applications. As you very well know, there is so much of data you we keep scrolling. So there has to be some way to render the, the list very efficient way that this is how virtualized list is a solution. Second thing is infinite scrolling and pagination. Okay. So every time when I ask this question in the interview, I very commonly ask, let's say you have to render a list of 10,000 items. What is that you are going to do? Every single person will say like, I'm going to use pagination or something. My question is like, how actually you're going to paginate? Like what technique you use? Everybody say a pagination technique. That is, they say we pass an index to the backend. The backend will process that index and returns the result. For example, you pass a page one and sometimes the size is dynamic. Most of the time size is fixed. Like page one, send me 10 data. Then I pass page two, they'll send next 10 data. It goes on basically. But the problem with this particular approach is that's what I'm going to, that's what I want to explain this particular video. 
let's look at these things in detail uh, okay see the problem with this approach is look at this particular thing okay so this is called whatever the most common technique that everybody say in the interview this is called an offset based approach okay where we are going to send an offset to the server so if you observe this very carefully where we have one two three four let's imagine this as the data whatever we are showing on the ui so that is on the page one on page two we have five six seven eight on page three we have nine ten eleven twelve so imagine every number here represents a unique post that you see on any social media now you request it for page one they sent you the page one, then you request a page two, they sent you page two and page three. Wonderful. That works like perfectly fine. But imagine a system like Facebook or Instagram where so much of a new content is coming like every second. Correct. So by the time you, for the simplicity sake, I'm doing this. Okay. Let's say you, you send the page one, they sent you one, two, three, four. And then like new data came where the new data will be inserted. Definitely in the beginning, not at the end, because the Facebook or Instagram wants users to see the new content that is coming and not like pushing it at the end. So now one, two, three, four is pushed to the right. So zero minus one, minus two, minus three. Let's imagine this is a new content that came, which came in the page one. So if first you made a request to page one, you got one, two, three, four. Now you're making the request for page two, which is obvious because you want the next screen content, but the, whatever the content was here, that is slided here now already. So whenever you're actually getting the page two's content, it's not page two content, whatever the content which you already have, that only you're getting a part of page two content. This is the biggest problem with the offset based approach to show it to you very clearly. I have drawn this table and explaining. Okay. So remember this. So every time, whenever they ask which approach you're going to use, tell I'm going to use offset based approach. And this is the problem. This particular technique is suitable for those systems where the content is not really very dynamic. So there you can go with the offset based approach. Okay. There is another approach called cursor based approach. Okay. What is cursor based approach? So instead of like you making a request by a page number, the backend itself will send you a cursor. Like for example, in the first request, it has sent you one, two, three, four as the data. So the last index, the fourth item, the whatever you got will have a cursor. Every post for that matter will have a cursor. Like this particular one will have a cursor. This one will have a cursor. All of these will have a cursor. Cursor in simple words, imagine like the post ID with our example. So now I have the fourth post ID. Okay. So next time, whenever I make a request, I'm going to send my fourth post ID. So the backend would know if the user has got the content till here. Let me load from that particular point. Okay. So here there is no chronological order. So whatever the cursor that we are sending cursor can be computed in multiple different ways. Like for example, uh, whatever the trending content, right? That particular cursor can be sent and the next trending content can be fetched. Like don't imagine like it is going to be like this only. So cursor might sometimes point to the content, which is previous as well. So backend basically has a complete control of sending the cursor. So, and whatever the next cursor it wants to point again, it is controlled via the backend. Okay. The so cursor based approach is extremely useful whenever we are using the social media sort of a content where the content is changing very frequently, then cursor based approach is good. When the content is not changing very frequently, the offset based approach is good. Okay. Now let's go to the third problem that is handling live video commenting. This I've explained a little bit about in my YouTube system design video as well. If you're not seeing it again, it's part of this playlist only. I'm trying to put the link somewhere on the screen and the description section, please go ahead and check it. So, but let's discuss in detail. One of the uh, feature of Facebook is live video and a lot of celebrities use this where they come on live. And you know, that fact that like whenever somebody is online and making a live video, there are times where within a second, like hundreds or thousands of comments would flow into the system. Let's say you are open the uh, Facebook mobile app and you are seeing a video. So many comments are coming, correct? How do clients get those comments? Like there are multiple ways. Like for example, I to get a comment somehow, I need to make an API call to server to get the content, correct? What I can make? I can make an API call at a periodic interval. Okay. I've, I've discussed those techniques here. So periodic interval. So we call, you can call it like a short polling and a long polling. What is short polling? Every specific duration of time, I will poll the server. Like for example, every five seconds, I make an API call to get some data from the server. Okay. So whatever the comments by that time has come, I'm going to push it into the comment list so that that can be usable for the user. What is the long polling? Long polling is relatively for longer duration of time. Instead of like you make a call and if server is not giving anything, you come back. You make a po you make a call, you wait for some duration so that immediately there might not be any comments, but within few seconds, some comments might flow. So the polling duration is slightly longer. Third thing and very important thing is server sent events where 
the client is not asking uh, uh, client is not doing anything server only will send some events saying like uh, uh, i have some comments please make an api call that is a time where client would make an api call try to get some uh, events from the server like uh, comments from the server fourth point is sockets i have explained this very much in depth in my uh, messaging uh, end to end messaging system design i'm going to put that also in the screen and the description section please go ahead and check that out to understand sockets in detail but in a very nutshell socket is nothing but an end to end connection there are two devices where a dedicated connection is established between the two devices two devices here i mean uh, uh, two systems there could be client and server client and client etc so where there is a dedicated connection the last approach is the http to server push so this you guys might have seen on the, uh, the news applications where let's say you subscribe to the news even when you not open their web application you will get a web push notification saying like there is a new uh, something has happened can you click so there is all the news updates you will be receiving like a push notification this you can correlate with a mobile apps push notification also okay now which technique to use the best technique that or the technique that even the facebook using right now is server sent events okay different applications might be using different technique but with my research most live commenting features in youtube facebook and every other platform mostly uses the sockets okay where there is a dedicated connection established in the client and server so that every time whenever the uh, a comment come into server that is pushed into the devices uh, any client that they are using for example there are 10 different clients comment user one sends a comment it goes to server and it broadcasts to everybody who has established a sockets connection with the uh, server this is going to give you the best performance compared to any other techniques mentioned here so sockets are the best technique okay all in in all the technique that we have sockets are nothing but the best technique that we can follow okay now let's move to another problem that is a resource optimization see resource optimization is one of the why it is a biggest problem is people have a tendency of like keep scrolling you all know like how people do on instagram like one after another post they they keep scrolling correct so user will not wait for a lot of time to get this good content so they want to get the content very quickly so what are the different techniques that we can use to get a better experience for the user one is have a resolution specific resources so what do i mean by resolution specific resources let's say somebody uploads an image okay very high quality image from his web uh, website like from facebook web web application they have uploaded the image but somebody is using the want to view that image from a very low end mobile phone so what we should do on the back end side is whenever an image is uploaded or resource is uploaded we should process it and create like multiple variations of it like for a different uh, resolution uh, uh, for example a higher resolution image is uploaded we should have a variations of it with a lower resolutions so whenever a client requests particular resource we should know like what is the performance of that particular device or what is the orientation of the device what is the size of what is the capacity of that particular device depending on that a resource has to be loaded so that there is a high chance where the resources will be loaded very quickly and people get a seamless experience okay second thing is cdn i'm sure most of you might be aware of cdn if not cdn is actually a content delivery network how cdn works i'm trying to explain at a very high level here okay so where instead of like getting the resources every time from a server we could use a content delivery system where that particular content delivery network where those images or the resources are cached and we will getting it from the cache server so as you can see here the user request the content delivery network for the resource if it has a resource it will immediately respond okay if it is not having a, um, a res, uh, re, uh, that particular resource it will request to the server and even when server is not working the the content delivery network can still respond to the user with the help of already cached resource and whenever server responds it's going to store it in its its cache and respond it back to the user okay this way the cdn systems are act like a very fast delivery of the resources definitely they have their own drawbacks as you all know this becomes a bottleneck even if server is up and running if content delivery network goes down there is no resource that we would get every system has pros and cons but lot of systems use the cdn for their resource handling and the most people would not be aware of this that is webp okay what is webp webp is an image uh, image format like we have jpg png uh, like that there is a webp is also image format which can like load the images very efficiently so you can go ahead and see here google right now owns webp that webp lost this image is 26% smaller compared to png equivalent and that lost image is like 25 to 30% smaller than jpg equivalent uh, images okay so if you are watching the video and if you are somebody who is building a new website or you have already have a web application 
please use web images going forward which is going to load your website in lightning fast speed so how to convert it into the how to convert a given image into web image google itself has a software where you can upload your images convert into web and store it to your authority in your website it's going to give you like very quick loading time the last thing is resources based connectivity see we all have varying different connectivity correct like for example i am in 3g i am in 4g i am in 5g from that point a to point b when i'm traveling in my cab or auto or in my own car where my connectivity might be keep changing so the resources also should be lo loaded based on the connectivity this is slightly extension to the first point like where we would store the different um, uh, images in the uh, like whenever some person uploads some content uh, different resolution specific resources are stored they has to also consider the connectivity for example if somebody requests from a laptop with 3g con internet connectivity which version of the resource need to be loaded should be known to the server that will only will give you the seamless experience okay these are the things that i want to explain as a part of this particular video we have primarily covered four problems rendering large list infinite scrolling and pagination handling live video commenting and resource optimization okay i'm sure most of you like the video if you like the video please like on youtube if you comment if you, if you feel if you have any doubts please add a comment section add it in the comment section i will be more than happy to answer or if you uh, think your friends also might get benefited please share it with them if not already subscribed to my channel please subscribe to my channel i'm going to get more such i'm going to bring more such good content and i write lot of interview preparation front end materials on my linkedin so please follow me on linkedin as well the link is in the description section if you want me to make any specific video about system design please mention that in the comment section i'll be more than happy to make a video about it thank you so much for watching catch you in the next video